Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game of Cairns Cup 2020 and uh, this time I would like to show you, in my opinion, the most important game of the tournament um, because it decided who gonna be the winner and about the Cairns Cup, it's the strongest women tournament uh, in the chess history at least Saint Louis Chess Club stated that and indeed we have 6 out of 10 strongest women in the world uh, in chess category of course uh, so uh, I would like to show you the the game of Hampi Koneru from India and she's 32 years old and her ranking is 2580 and this is uh, number three in the world by ranking of all women players and uh, her opponent uh, is Alexandra Kosteniuk, uh, 35 years old, and she was the world champion already in the past, uh, but it was 12, 10 years ago, and she's from Russia, her actual ranking is 2,504 um, points, and uh, she's uh, 11th uh, place in the world uh, by ranking at least. Uh, so very interesting game and these two players had the chance to win the tournament and also uh, the strongest uh, Chinese player, world champion, actual world champion uh, Juven Jun also had the chance but she lost to Carissa Yip which the game I show you already if you want to see this is this was also a very big surprise so Carissa Yip was very successful here and uh, not in term of whole tournament but she achieved you know beating the world champion in the age of 16 very amazing achievement and now Hampi Koneru and Alexandra Kosteniuk uh, fight uh, actually for the first place it was not the last round but it was the most important uh, game in this tournament so uh, Hampi Koneru play as white and Alexandra Kosteniuk as black so without further ado let's jump into the game uh, we have knight f3 ready on the board, we have d5, now d4, knight f6, so we're gonna have, uh, you know, tra transpose the uh, opening, we have c4, e6, knight c3, so queen's gambit declined, and we have Ragozin defense with bishop on b4. And here white can choose actually between bishop g5 and uh, queen a5 with check or queen b3 with attacking this bishop. Um, also c takes on d5 is possible. However, um, Hampi Koneru play a very silent e3 move. We have the castle, we have bishop on d2, so in similar manner how um, Vidit Gujarati play in Prague five days later. Uh, we have b6 and rook on c1. And as I told you, five days later, Vidit Gujarati during Prague Chess Festival got similar structure. So now if Kostenio would play bishop on b7 and we would have um, bishop on d3, rook e8, uh, c takes on d5, it takes on d5, we would have a very known um, uh, structure where normally the, the castle is played but uh, we did five days later play knight on b5 and uh, with a lot of complications and difficult game for black so i'm just wondering if uh, indian team you know uh, work together on these openings um i have no idea however because then you play bishop on a6 so uh it's impossible to get the same uh, structure now and we have queen on a4 for attacking the bishop. Bishop is defended now by the queen, but after a3 it has to be exchanged for the knight. Uh, so we have bishop on c3 and then knight e4 attacking the, the bishop, so uh, black don't want uh, white to have advantage in bishop pair. We have bishop on e2 and knight on c3 and rook on c3 as well. Now d takes on c bishop takes on c4 and bishop on b7 attacking the knight on f3 uh, so Conero just play bishop e2 she doesn't want to you know mess up the pawn structure uh, he's very careful about that and now we have a rook c8 by Kosteniuk queen c2 uh, and here c5 uh, so Kosteniuk goes for um, you know 
very simple plan. She wants to exchange all the pieces and try the end game. So we have D takes on C5, Rook takes on C5, Rook takes on C5, and uh, and here Queen takes on C5. So exchange even more pieces, and now Queen takes on C5, Bishop takes on C5, and here is actually. Um, Kosteniuk wanted to exchange the stuff, but it's very important position now, as black are slightly worse here. First, they have isolated pawn on the C file. They also have the king in the corner. So uh, actually feel free to pause the video and try to find the best way for white uh, to start this end game, what to do to don't get dominated by black? Because this pawn uh, is weak now, but it also can be strength uh, if the knight can, for example, go on b6 and um, this pawn can be pushed, especially with the rook attacking on the b file. It can be very annoying. So, what to play uh, as white while I enjoy my cup of tea? Okay, ready? So, uh, if you like, for example, a uh, king on d2, you know, uh, moving the king to the center, that's actually not the best idea. It's uh, equalize the game. Uh, after knight on d7, as I told you, this is the, the move which, which have to be considered. Uh, rook on c1, attacking the, uh, of course, the, the weakness on c, but then rook on b8 and uh, and black has quite nice game now. They have quite nice counterplay. They still have this weakness, but it start to be very uncomfortable for white uh, because knight on b6 can be played. At this rook, watch at the b2. Uh, this pawn actually can be um, pushed uh, very soon and uh, not really clear what to do by white. But if you found bishop on b5, then congratulations, that's the move. And now knight on d7 is not possible. So if black want to continue the plan, they have to go um, some other way. For example, this way to b6, it, and it's gonna take, um, you know, four moves instead of two. So two tempi difference. Uh, so we have knight on a6 by Kosteniuk, king e2 now, it's uh, much better than uh, d2, so moving this bishop is also good because, uh, you, know, you know, it's um, left the space for the king. Now we have knight on c7 attacking the bishop, bishop d3 and knight d5, centralizing the, the knight. Uh, and here we have rook on c1, obvious move. Uh, now we have rook on c8 uh, and knight on d2. Uh, knight b6 as planned, so this is the best spot for the knight. And here f3, um, as now g2 is under um, attack. Here we have king on f8 and knight on c4. Probably again, bishop on b5 was much better idea here, and it would keep all the tension on on black. So, for example, with knight on b3 idea. Uh, so, for example, king uh, king on e7, e4, knight d7, and now this knight actually, you know, can attack the the c5 and black would have quite passive position of course uh, attack on a6 doesn't give anything because uh, white can retreat to a4 and that would be much better for white however hampi conero uh, played some inaccuracy and gave you know equalized the game she played knight on c we have bishop on d5, um, so Kosteniuk want to exchange more pieces. Now have to think uh, what is better here in this situation, the knight or the bishop, and uh, you know have to calculate that. Uh, however, uh, if e4 is played, uh, e4 equ equalize the game completely. So for example, e4, knight c4. Uh, bishop c4, bishop c4, and rook on c4, and it looks like it's much better for white. The king is in the center, this is weak, but actually it's not true. After rook on b8, very active move, uh, that's what is important in the rook endings, uh, 
white actually can take this weak pawn on c5 because then black would take on b2 and you know uh starting to pick up the pawns on the second rank so that would be not uh, that would be disaster actually for white uh, so rook on c2 would have to be played and after rook on b3 also cutting the king from um approaching the the c for weakness c5 weakness uh so king on d2 uh it was had to be played king e7 king c1 king d6 and black are on time uh to stay next to the uh, c5 pawn and and now that that is um, just the draw uh however knight on e5 was played by um hampi conero and uh, and that's actually equalized the game totally now we have just c4 push the c4 so bishop has to be moved on b1 now e5 very important move uh, and now we have e4 so this was the making the space for the bishop and bishop is very happy on e6 uh, it defending a c4 and also we have more defenders actually three defenders um, on c4 so c4 blocking paralyzing the position of white at this moment we have bishop on a2 king on e7 and now um hampi conero see that that um that it's it's impossible now to do anything against this pawn uh, so she play b3 so um black now just you know uh get rid of the of this weakness c takes on b3 now rook takes on c8 knight takes on c8 and bishop on b3 we have bishop on b3 knight on b3 and the position is totally deadly equal and it's nothing to do here and uh, the players actually should just sign the draw however who is better in the uh, knight's endings? Uh, this is very, very difficult ending. There's a lot of calculations are needed here. And the players try to, you know, decide who is better. So we have king on d6, king on d3, and knight b6. King on c3. And now f6 could be could be uh, just solid move equalizing even it's nothing to equalize here but make the position solid and uh, boring uh, however alexandra kostenyuk try to play risky chess so she goes knight on a4 and check very risky maneuver uh, king on b4 attacking the knight so knight goes on b2 and now knight can try actually to attack the pawns uh, but th that's always the problem is it the problem now that king can pick up the a7 pawn let's see so we have king on b5 knight on d1 and now if hampi conero this is everything to you know to calculate if she take if she goes to a6 king on a6 is actually doesn't work because knight c3 is very strong so king can take on a7 because knight b5 and king b6 and now this is this is the draw for sure it's nothing to do on any uh, any of the sides of the chessboards so we have knight on d2 first now knight on c3 knight on c3 is first in accuracy by kostenyuk here if she play knight on e3 it would be more interesting and uh, still would give her some chances and definitely were was also uh less risky so g3 for example knight on c2 attacking now um, the pawn now knight c3 defending and with check uh, king c7 and now knight e5 that would be pretty interesting but it's um, not better for white because now knight on e3 and now black has the passed pawn on a uh, so for example king on c5 f6 kicking the knight knight on c6 attacking now um this pawn and for example knight on c4 knight a7 
and now black just attack d2 attack the, the these two pawns so if you if you see this structure always um you know attacking side can pick up one of the pawns not in the ca in this case knight on b5 with check king d7 and now defending f3 but black actually can go knight on f1 and after g4 can pick up knight on uh, uh, pawn on h2 and that would be uh, that would be also drawish so um more solid maybe more interesting uh, more crazy line but it's still it's still draw if both sides um play precisely uh, but we had knight on c3 with check by Kostenyuk, king on b4 attacking this knight so knight on e2 and knight on c4 with check we have king on e6 king on c6 actually is impossible because now e5 uh, can't be lost that would be um that would be very bad that would be losing actually for black and this time so king on e6 has to be played but the problem is now we have king on b5 we have g6 so now uh, any uh, the only counterplay uh, is by activating um, f pawn and of course creating um, another passed pawn as um, this knight is now too slow to do anything here so we have king on a6 we have f5 and king takes on a7 if he takes on f5 it's also possible uh, it, it doesn't change much uh, g takes on f5 and king a7 uh, king d5 but now knight e3 attacking the king attacking the pawn so um th that would be still better for white uh but king on a7 uh, is also uh, much better for white we have f takes on e4 f takes on e4 and knight on c3 attacking now uh, e4 and here we have king on b6 so now uh, giving the uh, the possibility of uh, marching for the a pawn the only problem is this knight but this knight jump to e4 now uh, and here if a4 uh, it looks like very very attractive but actually this is this is uh, too early if a4 is played then we would have king on d5 and now knight on e3 with check king d4 and now if a5 then knight d6 and now if a6 then king can take on e3 that's that's possible and then if a7 then of course it's better for black black is winning here because uh, picking up the pawn and this pawn is marching and black would win so have to be very careful here uh, but actually after um, a6 and king on e3 king on c6 also could be played but it also doesn't work this time black not gonna win but uh, black just gonna dance around this pawn and white never gonna catch this uh, this knight so for example king on b7 knight d6 king c7 knight b5 uh, king b6 knight d6 and it's impossible to catch that knight uh, so if this knight uh, pick up the pawn then of course um, it's game over and black would win so um, a4 in this position would be just too early this is why knight on e3 first uh, controlling f5 and d5 so the king can't approach here we have knight on c3 now controlling um, a4 we have king on c5 knight e4 with check king b5 now knight d6 with check king c5 now knight e4 with check again but now king b4 and knight d6 and here a4 would be much better for example knight on f5 uh, and if knight takes on f5 that would be only draw so for example knight takes on f5 g takes on f5 and it looks like white um, are faster and the king can uh, can help but actually if the king helps here then black king has enough time uh, to pick up the a pawn so for example king on c5 blocking the king uh, e4 but now king can come actually approach um, this dangerous pawn on d4 uh, h5 very important move a5 
and now just king d6 and black are on time uh, so king on e3 king c6 king f4 king b5 and now h3 king a5 and g4 just uh, drawing the game so f takes on g4 h takes on g4 h takes on g4 and now king takes on e4 and it's of course the draw uh, so a4 would be possible but after knight on f5 the knight can't be taken because that would be the draw but knight on c4 could work so for example king on d5 a5 now e4 a6 and king c6 and now king c3 very similar but now knight h4 knight e3 uh, defending the g2 pawn knight f5 uh, of course it can be taken knight d5 and this would be very strong and now this knight of course can't be taken because uh, of the a pawn but also uh, this knight uh, can attack very easy uh, on h7 so uh, for example h6 could be played and now king d2 knight h4 attacking the the pawn and actually what white can do is king on a2 and uh, and actually it's 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 better for white uh, and it slowly can can win this game and black even can take on g2 uh, even this possibility is, 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 you know, disabled. Knight on g2 is actually uh, losing even faster. Now we would have knight on e7 with check, king b6, uh, knight on g6, king a6, uh, king f2, and this knight is actually trapped. The, there is no move for this knight, it's gonna be taken. Uh, everywhere it, it's moved, then it's gonna be taken. So uh, king b5, uh, but it but it's too slow. It's like king c4, uh, king f2, uh, king d3, knight f4 with check, king d2, h4 now e3 and king f3 and of course uh, white is winning as this knight is gonna just control e2 and um, that's enough to win. So uh, so yeah. That was the that was the chance to push this a4 in this position, um, but um, Humpy Conero just uh, play knight on c4, trying to exchange um, the knights, and it was very strong move. Uh, the only answer for Black now is knight on b7. This is the only answer. And now, if a4, I will just show you this. Uh, what would happen? Uh, because just to fill the position of this knight, how how the blockade um, and everything is is working here. So a4, uh, king on d5, then a5, and if knight takes on a5, then king d4, and white has to try to find the way uh, to sacrifice um, the material. So have to give back the and the knight and then that's gonna be a draw so uh, after knight b7 a4 would not work and uh, king on b5 would be even worse because now black is winning uh, believe me or not but now black is winning so a uh, king d5 a4 but now e4 knight e3 king d4 king b6 king e3 king b7 and now black are just faster so for example um, king on f2 and after moving the pawns black are faster and yes white get the queen but after um, exchanging uh, black just pick up the pawns and of course win the game so white still would have to be very careful black would still have chances however knight f5 this is the final uh, inaccuracy i think mistake by kostenyuk and now we have a king c5 very strong move now we have h5 by kostenyuk she already knows that she can do nothing about this marching pawn she trying to create some uh, counterplay here uh, but it's too slow knight on d2 
knight on d6 but now now this knight uh, can do anything um, on the queen side we have a4 knight on b7 with check but now king on c6 and situation is different now this knight can't uh, just dance around uh, knight on d8 with check king on c7 now king on e7 uh, protecting the the knight and now e5 and nothing can be done knight on e6 with check king c6 now king d8 trying to uh, you know uh, stop the pawn uh, but it's already too late it's nothing complicated to calculate we have a6 king c8 a7 knight d4 with check and king b6 and uh, in this position alexandra kosteniuk as black resign the game and also um of course next move is the queen and also she had uh, she could try knight on c7 but it also doesn't work even it looks much better because knight on c4 uh, attacking the uh, e4 e5 pawn and uh, and if pawn is moved then just pick up this pawn this way and white of course would win so this is why in this position uh, Alexandra Kosteniuk resigned the game. So Hampi Koneru got one point and Alexandra Kosteniuk didn't get one point, what is very important now, because here are the final standings of the tournament. So Hampi Koneru won the tournament with the score of six points and this is a sole lead of course. Uh, she also got $45,000 as a prize, first prize, and the second place for Wen Junju, uh, five and a half points. Uh, she just lost to Carissa Yip, and um, that was the most important game probably uh, for her, as she could have a chance to get the first place. The same with Alexandra Kosteniuk, five points. If this game is ended in her favor, she could be the first. But congratulations to uh, Hampi Koneru. Um, the next place is Maria Muzichuk from Ukraine, Harika Dronavali, another Indian player, Katerina Lagno, Nana Zagnidze, and Kari Saib, 16 years old, um, with the lowest ranking from all the um, players, Irina Krush and Valentina Gunina who won the first edition in 2019 of this tournament but um, this tournament was a disaster for her and she got only two and a half points uh, so yeah and uh, that's all uh, once again uh, congratulations for hampi Koneru. and uh, if you like this video press a like if you don't like it for some reason press unlike and now we're gonna go for the a Prague tournament, Prague International Festival uh, played uh, in Europe. So uh, if you don't want to miss any of the of the games uh, commented, uh, click subscribe, click the bell button. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.